Hey, thanks for joining me once again. It was a sad day recently. Uh, my brother and I, we reviewed X-Force number nine. And that was the last issue that Rob Liefeld drew of the flagship title that honestly brought him... His, well, it was certainly his greatest success and most financial and critical acclaim up to that point. I don't know that Youngblood... I mean, it was a bigger, I don't know, it was it a bigger sales success. It was certainly a, a huge sales success, but I don't think it was bigger than, or maybe necessarily better than the X-Force run in terms of sales. I don't know. But he's gone. Now, his plots, his stories, he's still credited under plots for at least an issue or two. I'm not sure how far into it in the future it goes, but he's not drawing it anymore. But it was a huge title, one of Marvel's biggest. And those of us who are collecting it, this is myself included, I was invested in the story. I was really curious as to what the hell was going on. We were getting into who the hell is this Strife guy that looks like Cable? Who are these externals we keep hearing about? This Weapon X, dude, this version of Weapon X was kind of cool. So I wanted to know what was going to happen. Um, so they got to bring on somebody else to draw the book. Well, who do you get to follow Rob Liefeld in X-Force? Well, if you're an idiot editor... I mean, maybe it was a smart decision. I don't know. You find some kid, presumably, who sort of draws like Liefeld, but has none of his strengths, of which he absolutely has. As much as we all uh, give Liefeld's art a bunch of shit, and my, I do too, a lot. There's so many wrong things with it. But he honestly has some things that are right. His energy and action, his page layouts can work really well. So you just find some kid that kind of does a version of that and tries to keep that same energy. And they find this guy, Mark, uh, I think it's Mark Pasella. Uh, Dan Panosian, he did the inks on the uh, previous book too. And Panosian, I've mentioned this several times. Anytime I see him, I want to make sure I shout out what a goddamn good artist he is now. But he's just doing inks over here. But this Pacella guy, he's like, it's like the work, worst excesses of Liefeld and, a, and a, not a real understanding of how to draw human forms. It's like it's somebody who studied comic books as his only reference to human anatomy and then takes it to this crazy extreme artistic level. But as I was kind of flipping through it, it's bad but there's things about it that absolutely work i think that i could argue that in places pacella does some layouts that are trying to follow that same rob liefeld vibe um but maybe does it a little better because he can draw things better than liefeld not necessarily human anatomy but there's actually a helicopter here that looks like kind of like a helicopter um, there's actually an understanding of backgrounds on some level that Liefeld just does not have. So it's a weird mix-up of shit that's worse, but stuff that's better. It's so strange. It's a really interesting phenomenon to kind of witness how he's he's a he's a terrible artist, but he's doing things that are better than Liefeld. And so it's a it's a mixed bag of good and and of better and worse. We'll we'll get to some examples. Um, they were pushing the ever-loving shit out of Gideon because Liefeld created Cable, Liefeld created Deadpool, he created Gideon, so Gideon must be awesome, right? Well, at this point, he's a big, giant, steaming pile of nobody, so it, who cares? Um, I don't think he ever became anything that ever really clicked. Big action energy, Weapon X fighting all these uh, Mutant Liberation Front bad guys. I feel like we've seen that in little bits and pieces over the last couple of books. So there are things going on in here that are like this is just the most kind of juvenile face. Like someone who's not ever probably looked at a real human face and tried to draw a real human face ever. It's just stuff you've taken from comics. Um, it's not great at all. So we're off to a bad start. Um, you know, bad guys fighting Weapon X here. If we're going to show this version of Weapon X, we have to show him dis uh, disconnect his hands to choke people because that's what he did in his first appearance drawn by Liefeld back in, what was it, X-Force number two? 
So every time we show him, he has to do that. But it's all kind of like basic kind of 90s comics like this. 90s image comics era style was certainly kicking off right here. And the influence that Liefeld had was so undeniable. It's just all over this book. It'd be really interesting to... I don't know if there's any interviews out there on this Mark Pasella artist. Because it'd be really interesting to hear like what he thought when he got this gig. You're taking over X-Force from Rob Liefeld. Like, how did that feel? What did he know at the time? How does he feel about his old work? I'd be just fascinated to be able to hear that. Um, this was an interesting page. This always stuck out to me really well. Uh, Weapon X here, guy. He shoots, I don't know if it's supposed to be fire or lasers. Tasers, I guess. This is an interesting shot. Like, there's some interesting kind of muscular anatomy. It's very comic book anatomy. But it kind of works. I think the inking's kind of good. They also utilize, all over this book, in several places, lots of screen tones. There's this screen tone going on on this guy's body to kind of give it a, a, a shadowy effect. And there's a couple other places we'll get into where that comes up again. And then, But I like the weird lasers. I don't know if that's the best composition to have him shooting it this way and then have it come from a little tiny point. But for some reason, it stuck out in my brain. Like, it kind of worked. Um, another terrible face. These long, lanky, skinny, muscular comic book bodies. I kind of like this cloaked figure. That's kind of interesting. I kind of like the coloring around. I don't know. There's some good and there's some bad. It's not all a giant clusterfuck. It's really not. <clears throat> Um, you know, uh, these characters, I think there's some more of the characters. I mean, they're connected with, um, Gideon or Stripe. I just, I don't remember who they are. I don't know if I care. In fact, I know I don't care. I'm a hundred percent certain of it. Um, another thing, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to say it never happens, but Panosian is adverse to putting, like, I, can't, I don't know. There's so many places where there's no pupils in the character's eyes. Like, there's some there, but there's not there or there. Um, I guess there's sort of some there, not there. I don't know. They kind of come and go. You know, Weapon X has got them there. Strife does not, but Strife can. He should. He should. I don't know. It's just a weird thing. We'll see it as it goes along. But I guess Strife is kind of revealing revealing himself to Weapon X that he's Cable underneath the mask. And Kane, you know, Weapon X, or he's pretty pissed off at that. He's shocked. Here's another one of those pages with that screen tone. This shadow going on in this face, it's a really interesting design. I mean, to draw a big, giant face, it's such a simple kind of drawing just to like cut these shadows into it and then to throw this screen tone if you can see I don't know if it's just kind of coming across on the camera as like a just a a shadow like like a shade of color but there's like it's like a that's like a screen tone I'm certain of it where you lay it down you cut it out to fit into that to give it a, 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 a like a mid-tone um it's like they should have continued it up here with a hand inked that in there. I don't know. It's really weird. I don't think it works. But yeah, Rob Liefeld, plot, Nicias, scripts, Pacella, pencils, Panosian inks, and then just kind of the regular rest of the team. But it's still got the same kind of like a Liefeld type layout energy, the drawing style that the kids wanted. So, I mean, you can understand why the editors were going to like, we got to keep the same thing. But after all that nonsense of all these pages, uh, ten, you know, nine pages of just who cares about all this shit. But we're finally back with X-Force. If you remember, in the last issue, nine, they're fighting Sauron, who kept getting like, he shows up and he gets knocked down. He shows up and he gets knocked down. He shows up and he gets knocked down. He stabbed Cannonball through the, the body and he was dead. But Cannonball's come back to life. There's something about why is he still alive? Everyone's kind of freaking out. Um a little bit more attention is paid. Um, I mean, it's not hard to improve when on the backgrounds, when in the last issue by Liefeld, um, you know, you have to try a little bit harder than not at all. And Liefeld tried exactly zero to put almost any backgrounds anywhere. Pacella here, 
Um, he'll put backgrounds in the place to to almost make it work. Like there's like cracked ground and some little indications of material that's been damaged from the fighting. I always thought that this right here, Shatterstar stabbed Mask in the back in the last book. And there he is just splayed out on the ground. I laughed when I saw that right here. I'm like, holy shit, that is hilarious. Um, but yeah, stupid Sauron. I mean, he's, I guess he's down this time. But they're all kind of freaking out. Like, Cannonball's alive, and Boom Boom, who's basically in love with them. They've been together since, you know, 100 issues of New Mutants. Um, she's freaking out. This is kind of a interesting page, and but it's got problems. Domino, looking kind of cool. Again, that ridiculous, like, Liefeld just loves this mask design. He'll do variations of this. I mean, he's got two characters right here with that same basic mask design on. But he likes to frame faces in this thing. Like, I'm going to draw a head, and I put this design that comes across their forehead, down the side, and then cuts across close to their mouth. Yeah, he's probably done 10,000 characters like that, and it's stupid. I kind of like the idea of this long, skinny panel with her in it. But the way that it's drawn, like, I don't mind the, like, the side view with her shoulder coming towards us and her ass sticking out. But you can't see her arm or her hand or any. It's just, like, shoulder and then ass. It, it, we need to see more of it or just choose something different. I don't know. It doesn't work. This stood out when I remember seeing this. This giant figure. Tiny, tiny head. It's so ridiculous. But he's got... pacella has got a better understanding of human anatomy. You can see him trying to get it in there. Keeping a little bit more realistic, but still exaggerated. I kind of don't mind all this kind of metallic texture in this big metal arm up here. And this microscopic little head of cables. I think looks pretty good. I kind of get the feeling that Pacella kind of was inspired and, you know, motivated to do good. Um, so sometimes he starts hitting, he starts hitting his marks. Sometimes it's going to fail miserably, like I pointed out at the beginning, like... That sucks. That face sucks. But even though this is exaggerated and weird, I kind of dig it. This is really a ridiculous panel to put this little headshot of Sauron down here with his mouth open, just waiting for Cable to just shit in his mouth. Just he's like, drop a hot Carl on me, dude. Like, let's do it. So it's kind of terrible, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of working. It's just there's some compositional things that just don't make sense. But anyway, um, Cable gets Cannonball back to the medical ward, which, if I'm honest, if I remember, that's where they were. That's where this fight happened. But look, Pinocian kept, he did the Liefeld background things with these long, skinny, little nonsensical panels. But he actually drew some kind of like technological backgrounds and like a x-ray scanner. He's actually doing a thing. He's trying to put some backgrounds in there. This is kind of a not great panel. But this, I mean, it's very Terminator 2 inspired. Like, there's no dancing around that. But it's a pretty solid face. It's all pretty symmetrical. Like, eyes are in, in line this way. Liefeld can't do that. And then everything's kind of symmetrically placed. Like, you've got the center line for the, the head. But um, everything's kind of, like, evenly placed. God damn off the center line. Liefeld can't do that. He just kind of fake eyeballs it, sketches it, and then goes straight to ink. So should you get eyes that are like crooked or one eye closer to the nose that way than the other one? It's just always off balance. So there's something here. There's a better understanding. It's kind of not bad, you know? There's something there. And again, backgrounds. So my memory of this was that Pacella sucked. It was this hyper-exaggerated version of Liefeld that had everything bad and nothing that's good. But now that I've, I'm looking at this book for the first time in years, I'm looking at it with a more objective eye, and I'm like, he's got, he's better than Liefeld in a lot of ways. And given the opportunity to progress into the future, maybe Pacella will become a really good artist. Now, I honestly don't know whatever happened to the man. I have no clue. I haven't heard of him past the first early years of the 90s. I, I, wh where did he go? What is he doing? Is he, is he still alive? Is he drawing? 
I'd be really curious. I used to kind of not like this tall, gangly shot of a uh, cannonball as a kid because he's like 10 heads tall and super skinny. But I look at it and again, it's symmetrical. Like there's a, a good center line and he's balanced out. Everything's in line. And Panosian, or Pan well, Panosian on inks, but um, Pacella put in like a ground that he's standing on and it looks like he's actually on the proper kind of elevation and in perspective simple basic but it works so i'm like i kind of like it i kind of like this shot of cable's face i mean i i almost wonder if he uh swiped this from somewhere I'm not trying to take away anything from him but there's something kind of good about that that makes me wonder if he swiped something because that looks so good as compared to that shit face i keep coming back to it's almost like they're done by two different people. But maybe he's just getting a feel for everything. So that works. I kind of always like this shot with the coloring emphasizing how he's like um, like repairing his arm while they're having conversations where Cable's basically explaining all kinds of stuff to um, Cannonball. Basically, a Cannonball, like you're an external. You're one of a few chosen, select, super powerful mutants blessed with long life. You can't die. That's why you got stabbed and you're still alive. And um, so he's kind of going through this whole story. I wonder how much of this is what Liefeld came up with. I'm assuming he did. The High Lords, the externals. I don't know. But Cable's telling Cannonball, you could be Earth's last hope. So, again, kind of an interesting panel. Good pose. Like, you understand very clearly what's going on. Another weird, like, I need to draw a cable with his knee up on something. So he just draws some kind of, it looks like a little weird robot thing down there. And, again, those weird Liefeld-type shapes in the background. Um, kind of an interesting angle here. The down shot with the extended robotic arm kind of works. Now, this panel right here, I remember thinking, even as a kid, like, that looks good it's exaggerated look at those long lanky ass fingers i mean like he could take this hand and put it on his own face and he could wrap his fingers around his own head like a fucking face hugger but the hand is still got some nice gestures to it that work the face looks good and i like the use of coloring because he's like he's being told he's not just a normal person or a mutant with weird blasting powers He's a high lord. He's an external or whatever. He's immortal. He's like, he's like just looking at his own hand. And he's like, just realizing he's saying to himself, I can't die. And so what a heavy weighted thing to have to take in as a character. And I think this panel works. So I'm kind of shocked at how much I'm like, I'm just repeating myself about what Pacella can do right. And then some things start going weird. This looks like a swiped Liefeld pose. I swear to God. I've seen this somewhere. So either I think Pacella swiped that from Liefeld or Pacella drew this and then Liefeld swiped it for something else. I also do not understand this weird hippie techno whatever the fuck background's going on. Somebody lost their mind. Like, let's do something really fucking strange. Um, not a great shot of uh, Boomer's face. But on the flip side, this close-up, sorry, I'm, let me stop myself. I just, it's funny. I know I brought this up, uh, my brother and I, in the uh, previous X-Force. But this half-face thing, well, they got the Terminator 2 thing right there. It's funny to have that, what's very much influencing everything, the ad right there with the same Terminator 2 influenced face. But anyway, this close-up right here of Cannonball's face, kind of the little knowing smile. There's an expression on that face. It really kind of works. This close-up of Cable's hand, again, I don't think it shows up. I'm trying to focus on the camera. I can see it with my eyes, but these little dot patterns in it. There's a screen tone in there. So there's another use of those screen tones, another use of those weird patterns at Liefeld. I've, I mean, I've never seen it before him, but these weird patterns in the background, kind of not a great drawing. I think you can tell in places where Pacella was not inspired or hitting all his marks, but this is a terrible drawing of his arm down here. This whole page kind of sucks, minus this face. 
But it's weird when he does other stuff that looks so good. So I wonder if he spent a lot of time here and here and here, but then you get kind of a crunch and you're not inspired very much on this page. So again, I would love to know what Pacella was doing, taking over this book from Liefeld. It's really interesting. Um, you know, another giant splash page of cable. You know, that fits right within that Rob Liefeld 90s aesthetic era of drawing. Tiny head. Not great. I always thought as a kid, my first thought was this giant cannonball shape for his bicep. I understand what they're going for. I get it. It's not great, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Another close-up of that robot face. I mean... You know, it's like it's terrible, but it's like good terrible. Uh, back with um, Kane, Weapon X, and Strife. Now, this is another thing I noticed. The style of inking, I, I, I don't know. I'm just wondering if I'm seeing it differently. But, like, there's a cleaner, sharper kind of inking going on these pages with X-Force. But once you get into this stuff with Weapon X here, it gets really kind of chaotic, and a little bit more haphazard. So I wondered what that's all about. Um, and there's a few more examples of that coming up here in some of these pages. Kind of a big, cool shot of Strife. It's weird it's compositionally to cut him off right at his ankles on the page. You shouldn't have done that. Should have bring it up to his knees or something like that. Or shrink the figure down and draw him fully head. But cutting him off at his ankles kind of is, is not the right thing to do. Interesting little like swishy sw back and forth background on that thing there. Kind of weird. Kane jumping out there, jumping forward. That's a lot of energy and movement. It's kind of such a ridiculous outfit. I guess out of nowhere, forearm comes along, gets him in an arm lock and holds him down. And that's kind of not a bad side profile of them getting face to face where he can't believe this is Cable. Obviously it's not, but we don't know that. He doesn't know that. So kind of okay. Simple page is just figure drawing, no backgrounds. Then another big giant splash page, essentially, no backgrounds. But look at the chaotic, rough, weird inking going on here. Um, let me turn this face around and close up on it. Like, there's a lot of energy and emotion. Like, I feel it, but it's very different from the stuff on the previous pages. I'm a lot scratchier. I'd love to know what Panosian was doing on this. Um... God, I might actually screenshot this and message it to him and see if I get lucky to get any kind of response. I'd love to know that, you know. But then here's another shot uh, going back to the X-Force guys. Now, look, look at that chaotic, weird inking going on here. And it goes back to a slicker, cleaner look. So is that an intentional like this scene with the bad guys is one way and then the scenes with the good guys are a cleaner, nicer look? Is that intentional? Here's more actual backgrounds. This is showing a level of attention to backgrounds that Liefeld has never shown once in his life. Not a great close-up of her, but, I mean, giving this girl these stupid old man glasses is really stupid. I guess it's not bad. It's all right. It's okay. Another kind of weird, um, not weird. I, I say weird, but what I mean is like this tall, skinny, gangly character, but it kind of works. And the coloring, kind of keeping him in this one tone to isolate him in the scene. That's interesting. It kind of makes them two separate images. Like she's one thing and they were a different story element, even though they're put together compositionally in the same place. Very interesting. Now, <clears throat> I remember as a kid seeing this. It's so weird. His eyes are kind of crooked. But I appreciate the exciting page layout little skinny panel here and draw get to draw the sexy girl but have her breaking the panel border i don't know it's necessary but we did it so it's artistically interesting then a big giant shot of cannonball's head and then a little silhouette another skinny panel with some sort of indications of background as they walk off in silhouette and they're breaking out of the border of the the panel i can only imagine some of the old classic artists can you imagine taking these black and white pages, these finished pages, and setting them down in front of, like, John Romita or um, uh, John Buscema 
or Neil Adams back in the day and just be like, this is what the future of modern comics like. Take these pages back to the 60s and 70s and show them to those old masters and be like, in the 90s, this is what the kids are going to like. And they're going to think everyone lost their fucking mind. I, I just don't think they would get it on any level. Like, what is going on? Does everyone forget how to draw it's compared to those old masters? But what a weird angle. Like, his big, luscious lips... And then his, again, his eyes without pupils in them, they're kind of offset. This is so weird. And then his hair, I mean, I get he's got a, like, we're trying to draw him with a big poofy hairdo. But it's a little much. Eyes strange, crooked, the mouth, this weird, like, I get what he was going for. He's a skinny, gangly kid. Put some eyes in him first. You don't have to give him these big kissable lips. And it works a little better. Um, very stylistic thing to do here to have her legs come down and just kind of eliminate the details as they, as two separate legs and just kind of have them form one kind of silhouette shape and have the coloring do some filling in. Kind of weird. So again, not the worst thing I've ever seen, but not great either. And you get back to this crazy chaotic inking again. It's kind of a city. I guess that's a door being kicked in. I guess there's some vague indications of some office building, sort of. Like you got a chick in like a like a office outfit carrying paper, some random dude. I don't know. Is this supposed to be a water tank? Um, him skipping through the hallways. So strange. Again, no eyes. No eyes. No eyes. Um, that drawing right there of this dude's kind of good. But this weird muscular that is just such a terrible outfit like great tights or whatever the hell it is and this big poofy weird short red jacket dumb but anyway he shows back up kane does he's at De department k uh, headquarter headquarters in newfoundland newfoundland and richter former member of the new mutants has shown up and he's like i'm gonna join up we're gonna go do some cool shit as long as you get to kick uh, cable's ass giving him the thumbs up stupid curly hair stupid outfit no eyes again. Why no eyes? But the little kind of smiling smirk, it's there. Like you get the point of what he's getting at, uh, the emotion of the character. And then that's the end of it. So I don't know. I hope you all see what I'm kind of getting at, where there's moments where you start to see just a hint of skill and ability. It's there. But then there's other moments where it's like he is not getting it very well at all. And again, I can't imagine but just taking this, these books like this and showing them the old-timey artists and just being like, what do you think of this shit? And they'd probably just lose their minds. But that being said, this was the era. This was the time, uh, the 90s, and this is what the kids wanted. And it was a huge title. And I don't know. It's It's really interesting. Not a lot happens, but it advances the story a bit. We're finding out a little bit about Cable, a little bit about Cannonball. So, a very interesting book, I have to say. Uh, my memories of it, I was like, I was going to open this up, and like, I just remember Pacella being terrible. He's not great, but he's not terrible. So, again, if anybody knows, whatever become of him, can you let me know? In the comments, I would very much like to know. I mean, I could go Google search, I know, but it'd be interesting to, you know, if anybody knows anything, put it in the comments so we can have a little conversation about it. I would really like to know um, whatever happened to him. Didn't he do a book for Image Comics called Tooth and Claw? I am certain I never picked it up because I was like, that guy can't draw. Why would I want to get a Image Comic book from him? But now I'm kind of curious. Anyway, I was kind of rambling on. Um... Could have been a lot worse, you know, not great, but not bad. So that's all I've got for now. So thank you for watching. As always, I very, very much appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.